My life started in the slums of Oasis Springs. I wish I could say I lived here my whole life, but that just isn't the case. Here is my story. The only toy I had when I was little was a set of old building blocks. I cherished and played with them every chance I got. I think she hoped it would keep me from bothering her. It was the only consistent thing in my life. That and her yelling at me. I don't remember much growing up. Except that she was always angry. She would yell at me for being fussy. I didn't understand what she expected of me. I was two when the worst of it started. She stopped changing my diaper even when I begged because she said I needed to use my potty like a big girl. But she never showed me how to, so I kept using my diaper. She would only change it after I ripped it off and needed a bath. Then she would yell at me for making a mess. I couldn't make her happy. I just wanted to make her happy. I loved her. Getting a bath was the only other happy time I had. Besides my box, Ducky was my favorite toy. When she saw me play with it, she even played back and laughed. I remember thinking, is this what it's supposed to be like? One hot summer day, my mom brought home a blow-up pool, but it wasn't for me, it was for her to lounge in all day. She dropped my box into the dirt and I forgot about the pool. Even though I didn't know how to use them, I liked looking at the shapes and colors on them. They didn't holler at me or say anything to me. I could play in my own world and escape the one I was a part of. That night after she drug me back inside from playing, she left and went to work. I think she thought I would be okay if she put out enough food and turned on the TV. Like a dog. Looking back, I don't blame her. She was doing the best she could. It was starting to storm outside and I was unusually fussy because I was tiny and alone. I just wanted my mom to comfort me. Something she never did, but somehow I knew it was what I needed. After I calmed down some, I wanted to play with my blocks. When I looked around to find them, I realized they were still outside. I wobbled down the stairs in my dirty diaper and socks. I still wasn't good at walking. I found them just as a big bolt of lightning hit our house. It was then I realized I was in a big, scary storm. I cried and cried until a neighbor from across the street saw me out the window. I don't remember how I got inside because I had my eyes closed tightly, afraid of the thunder. I heard yelling, which I was used to, but there was a softer, kinder voice as well. I was so exhausted I fell asleep on the couch. It was my bed, so I felt a familiar comfort there. They talked back and forth for a while. The yelling got louder and finally woke me up. When I walked over to the woman, she said something to my mom. She told me her name was Lily, then picked me up and held me tightly. I hugged her, and she hugged me back. It was the first hug I ever had, and even though I loved my mom, I never wanted to let go of this woman. Lily took me outside and put me into her van. That was the last time I saw my mom or my blocks. She drove and drove until we stopped in front of a big house. When we got inside, the TV was blaring and some older kids were arguing over the remote. I stood there watching her talk with the other woman. The lady looked annoyed I was brought there so late at night. I was happy when Lily picked me up and carried me upstairs, bathed me, and put me into warm clothes. I never had jammies before. She tucked me into bed and read me a story. She explained how she was leaving, but I didn't understand. She had tears in her eyes when I tugged on her skirt, crying for her to stay. The months after, I desperately tried to fit in with the others. It was rowdy from dawn to dusk. The older ones ignored me for the most part, but one boy bit me every chance he got, and the lady yelled at me for standing up for myself. She yelled a lot. I didn't understand there was another potty option besides my diaper. I accepted the fact that this wasn't going to be any better than before. I also made her frustrated I wasn't as smart as some of the newer toddlers. At least now I had a full belly, clean diaper, and a bed to sleep in every night. The other kids seemed to have this life thing down, but I was behind in all things. Walking, playing, and existing. Things weren't much better when I got older. Again, I stood up for myself, but got in trouble every single time. Just like my building blocks, homework couldn't yell at me. I was actually very smart and enjoyed words a lot. 
I studied year after year, ignoring everything around me. I was growing up quickly. One night I found a beautiful fountain across the street. Afraid of the world around me since a toddler, I didn't stray far from the group home. Each night after everyone went to sleep, I tossed change into the fountain. I made a wish for a real family, a mom, a dad, and maybe even some siblings. What was out in the world for me? Would I be alone forever? On the brink of graduation, I lost every writing scholarship I applied for and felt like a total failure. Things unexpectedly changed for me the spring after my 18th birthday. I fell into the wrong crowd, convinced I wouldn't get anywhere. I wanted to be loved so badly. My stomach was growing more each week, and it was harder to hide. I didn't want to talk about the mistakes I made. It only mattered what I did from there. I was scared, but couldn't hide this much longer. I sat her down and told her I wouldn't bother her for money or help with the baby. I just didn't want to raise my baby the way I was raised. She told me how I was smart and kind, even though I went through a lot in my young age. Then she reminded me I was aging out of the group home after graduation. I stood up for myself, but she kicked me out right then and there. She told me how ungrateful I was for the roof I've had over my head all these years. She was right. All it was was a roof. No love, no compassion. My world turned gray when it should have been turning into so many different colors. I packed a box of belongings never looking back again and hitchhiked to Brindleton Bay. I walked around the beach until a path drew my attention. The path eventually led to a bare plot of land. It was empty and uninhabited with overgrown bushes and trees keeping prying eyes from it, unlike the rest of the bay. It was then I realized there was a reason I was here. A cozy seaside town. This is where I would put down roots and start my own family. This was our home now and no one could ever take that away. I wouldn't let them. So here I am, two years later. I have a beautiful daughter named after the social worker who helped me when I was little. Lily. I can't give her the things of this world, but I can give her love and attention and teach her how to walk, talk, and play. Things I never got to learn at her age. I do odd jobs here and there as I build a nice garden for us so Lily never goes hungry like I did. We still don't have a lot of belongings. It's been hard being a single mother without a home, but I work hard trying to give her the life I never had. We go to the park every day so Lily can play with the toys and others her age. I try to push her to make friends with others, but she hides behind my legs. She is so sensitive. When it's raining, we go to the library so I can work towards my GED. Lily never minds because she gets to look at the dozens and dozens of books in the kids section. I wonder every day who she will grow up to be. Another thing Lily loves is the pool. Every summer I become more aware of how my actions affect her. It was summer when I was taken away from my mom, so I'm extra careful to savor these moments together. I make sure she gets a hot bath every night at the community pool's restrooms. I may embarrass us, but I have peace to know that she is taken care of. She's learning so many words I never knew at her age. I'm doing the best I can. Sometimes I wonder if my mom is still alive. I also wonder who my dad is. For now, I'll try to enjoy this beautiful life we are living here in Brindleton Bay.